Hello everybody and welcome back to Provis Gaming and more Urban Empire in Profsburg. We have entered into Era 4, which is why our Wheel of Life looks terrible and our RCI needs to get recalculated, but... Here we are! Era 4, the end of World War II, moving on into the Cold War era. And now we are playing as Aiden Kilgannon. Or maybe it's Aiden Kilgannon, I don't know. I've, I've heard it both ways, but I, I think it's technically Aiden. We are soft, a populist, and an optimist. No longer progressive, surprisingly, but... We will have a pretty good amount of goodwill with all of the political parties, except for the Communists, pretty much. They they will not like me very much, which is unfortunate, because now they're the largest party in Sorelia, so... Oops, but anyway. Before we go any further, though, into this video and into Era 4, I want to talk to you guys about some of the mechanics that I have been testing over the last uh, weekend or so. I've spent a good 8 to 10 hours diving into this game, going over the spreadsheets, uh, really playing with the mechanics. I even reset the entire game and played for hours and hours trying to test some different ideas out. And I think I have found a source of a serious problem in Profsburg, and I want to talk to you guys about it now because I do think that a lot of you guys still watch this show because you like that I'm informative and that I can explain a lot of the mechanics of the game. Considering how ambiguous, uh, sorry, ambiguous, there we go, that it is... Uh, any any sort of reason, any sort of logic and sense to what seems like a totally random and unfair system may be pretty helpful. So I'm going to talk for a while now, a few minutes, about some mechanics that I've learned about in this game. And uh, specifically with regard to quality, classes, and education. Okay? So, if we look in Smithton here, one of the things we've been com complaining about for the last few videos, we've been having a lot of trouble with this in Era 3 in particular, is that a lot of our businesses, industrial and especially commercial, are low quality. They give us this little pop-up saying, hey, we have terrible quality. If we click on this guy right here, for example, minus nine quality, and they're losing tons of money. In fact, I would not be surprised if this business goes um, bankrupt relatively soon. But we have really, really good efficiency. So the question has always been, why the heck do we have such incredible efficiency in our city, but absolutely terrible quality in so many businesses? And I think I may have found the pattern. So I sat here in Smithton, going through all of our industrial companies, and here's what I've observed. Take this company, for example. Minus nine quality. What do you see here? Well, we have most of the infrastructure we need, except for the communications grid, but not too bad. We're mostly employed, but we're missing at least a couple people. Who are we hiring? Seven working class, five lower class. Okay, now let's look at a business that is not suffering. So, for example, how about this guy right here? 54 employments, okay? Fully employed a construction company with 10 efficiency and 10 quality. Making a reasonable amount of money, doing pretty well across the board. Who are we hiring here? We have 8 lower class, 36 working class, 5 middle class, 5 elites. And I can pick a whole bunch of different businesses here, but what you're gonna find is that the businesses with terrible quality have no middle class and no elites. Always, that is the case. That is a consistent pattern here, which tells me that the problem we are having right now, like this business right here, probably has two or three slots that are open looking for someone from the middle class and or the elites to join so they can get their quality up so they can sell good textiles, but they can't find them. What this tells me is we have a serious shortage of middle class and elite people. And in fact, I can prove this by looking at the employment statistics. First off, notice, by the way, the working class makes up 50% of our population, okay? We have a ton of working class people. But if we go here, what do you see? Right. Unemployment. Look at that. Look at it! No unemployed elite people in the entire city. Only 19, practically 0% middle class unemployed. Only 1% of the middle class is true, and the lower class is much higher employment. But seriously, look at this. We are starved for the middle class and the elite. That is the problem right now. That's why our quality is not matching up, and I'm even gonna guess that is why we can't get our commercial businesses to grow and actually get anywhere. Because we don't have the people employed that they need. They don't have any middle class workers or even shoppers. We do not have out of middle class and elites in our city. That's why we have been so industrially focused. We have tons of working class people. We can make industry work like crazy, but all we know how to do is produce cheap, efficient goods. That's it. Now, we've done really well with that, don't get me wrong. We've managed to stay over 120 million failures pretty much at all times. We very rarely run a deficit. We've been growing, we've been doing great, don't get me wrong. You can have a working class city, but 
I want to have a bit more of a commercially focused one so I can eventually start working toward those skyscrapers at the end of Era 4 and the beginning of Era 5. That's what I want to be doing right now, and we can't because we are having a class problem. So the next logical question you want to be asking then is where do we get more middle class and elite people? The answer is not personal growth. Okay, the devs of the game in a video seems to imply that personal growth and just sort of wheel in life in general were key to helping people progress through the classes, right? We need more social mobility, improve your this stuff, improve the personal growth, and people will be fine. It's a lie. It all comes down to the schools. And I did confirm that schools do have a hidden capacity limit to these guys. You wouldn't know it, because they don't tell you, but it is there. The way that people have found this out is if they go to the city data and to the uh, social groups here, they were paying attention to their student's number and eventually it would get to like some even number and just never grow. For example, 3,000. And you're like, wait a minute, for the last six months I've had 3,000 exactly students? That doesn't sound likely, what a coincidence. But take my 3,000 students divided by the six grammar schools that I have and oh, I wonder if grammar schools have a population capacity of 500. Sure enough. That's what it is, and people tested this out, and they have found that grammar schools have a cap of 500, vocational schools have a cap of 250, and high schools have a cap of 150. Or, wait, no, am I mixing that up? Is it actually, is it actually vocational have a cap of 150 and high schools have 250? Either way, the point is, right, we have had a capacity limit. Despite the fact that we've had incredibly high personal growth, I am willing to bet that we have not had enough schools and enough students in order to help people progress from the next step up. Because the way that this works, right, grammar schools, for example, take the lower class citizens and help them become students and move on into the working class, right? You get the same sort of thing with vocational schools and with high schools. They help people move from the working class into the middle class, from the middle class into the elites. And we would not have known it, but the fact that we only have two vocational schools and zero high schools means that we are not getting practically any middle class people or elites in the city. We have a glut of working class that we're working in the industry, but that is it. That's it. We have been bottlenecking ourselves for the last era, and we have not known it. Because the game doesn't freaking tell you anywhere that this is required. So I've had some people saying, hey, we need to be getting, you know, high schools and more different kinds of schools. You'll get more brain power because you're progressive. Well, that's certainly true. And yeah, you'll get more personal growth. But we haven't cared about brain power. We've been doing really well on this. I'm not going to spend 60,000 failures a month for two more brain power. We haven't cared about personal growth. All indication of we doing really, really well on that front. But what we haven't known is that we have been starving ourselves of class mobility because we do not have enough of the right types of schools. We've been screwing ourselves, and we would never have known had I not done this testing. So seriously, this is one of the big flaws of the game. This is one of those things where that's a very crucial mechanic that you really think you ought to know, but they don't tell you. So I have a bit of a bone to pick with this game right now, because I, I thought that I'd been doing fine. I know people have said to get more schools, but I thought with the personal growth and stuff, we're doing great. No. We have, we have starved ourselves of the labor that we need, and as a result, we will not be able to progress into a more commercially focused service sector economy until we fix this problem. So the first thing that I need to do then is start building a bunch more schools, okay? And again, this took me hours to figure out. I don't think the average player could ever know this. You just have to do it by like, oh, well, I've never built a high school, let's just build one, and not even knowing it's solving all your problems. Like, seriously, that is so stupid, but that's how the game works. So we're going to build some more schools, first thing in this video. We're gonna get some more grammar schools and a couple more places help the poor get into the working class, because right now we have too many of them and a lot of them are unemployed. Let's make them into students. We need to get more vocational schools and we need to actually place down our high schools. We haven't done that, we should have. I didn't know, it's a mistake, but I couldn't possibly have known it was a mistake because the game does not communicate. Okay, that is my rant here, but that's our plan forward. We're gonna try to convert working class people into middle class, into elites, start developing a more service sector economy, hopefully improve the quality and efficiency of all of our industry and commercial buildings, and maybe, just maybe, by the end of Era 4, we can start seeing the density and the demand in our city skyrocket. Hopefully. Now, speaking of density, since this is a related topic, I know a lot of people have been saying, hey, you have incredibly high industrial demand, why don't you try putting together a high-density industry, right? Why not do that? You can make tons of money off of it, right? Well, no, not necessarily. First off, in order to upgrade to a high-density district, I have to pay another 200,000 thalers per month. 
lots of money. But I tested this in Darlington in, this, in my off time and found that this, uh, this particular district would not even break even because we have an employment shortage. I mean, seriously, without more middle class, without more elite, and honestly, with only 1% unemployment with the working class, the problem here is if I upgrade all these guys to high density, yeah, they'll build the factories, but we can't fill out the employment. So they're not going to be able to pay for themselves because they're only going to be operating at like half effectiveness. So it actually is a terrible, terrible time to be upgrading this stuff to high density because we do not have the workers. All we're doing is trading away an entire district of profitable medium density factories for a, a, a district of unprofitable high density districts that end up costing me a ton of money. Terrible idea to do it right now, based on the employment thing. I really should have been looking at this sooner. I'm kind of surprised that I haven't. So that's what I've been learning. And I seriously have spent like 10 hours and so many failed attempts at this game trying to figure it out. But I think now I have some sort of an idea what's going on. I hope that explains a little bit to you guys because it took me forever. And I know that this is a long-winded 10-minute thing for the game. I know that. But in Urban Empire... Again, like, there's just not enough information. The biggest complaint that people have about this game right now is it just does not give you enough information to make intelligent decisions. But I think I have found something incredibly important. That's why I'm taking the time to make sure I am explaining it to you guys the best way I'm able to. Mental Health Clinic is now unlocked. We also can support psychiatrists, span lobotomy, and support psychologists. Extra health and stuff like that. All right, let's go back to the progress cloud. Uh, one of the first things that I'm actually going to work toward right now... Well, I think we'll go ahead and grab... We'll go ahead and grab, um, plastics first? Mm, yeah. We're gonna go ahead and grab plastics first, and then afterwards, I'm gonna make my way down toward the sexual revolution. Reason being, both pop music and the sexual revolution have several edicts that will do a lot as far as improving our wheel of life, which I think is gonna be very important for trying to fix out our residential demand, which has absolutely plummeted right now. And I'm honestly kind of surprised by that. If the jobs exist, you'd think that more people want to move into the city, and there'd be a high housing demand, but for whatever reason, no, there's there's not, and I'm not especially sure why that would be the case, but all right. Let's do a quick look and make sure that all of our institutions are good. I'm sorry for going on a long-winded rant. Any of you guys who have stuck with this channel for a long time know that I do this. Sometimes it's about, like, personal issues, political issues, but in this particular time, case, it's about, it's about the game. And this game, while it is fun and I love the idea of it, has so royally screwed up the communication back to the players. It is amazing to me that probably only like a dozen, maybe a few dozen people in the world seem to understand that those are the mechanics of Urban Empire. I didn't know, and it took me a lot of trial and error to figure it out. What would you expect of the average person? The average person who would play this game and they'd look at it and nothing would work the way they want it to and they'd give up and they'd be like, screw this game, it's stupid, it's broken. Well, it's not broken, it's sort of intuitive, but not enough. It needs to tell you straight up what the capacity is of a school. It needs to tell you all these things. So I don't know. I've got a bone to pick with this game. No doubt about it. The Pacifist Party wants to cut taxes. Yes, I will allow that, and the Pacifist Party will become more popular, which is good for me because they like me. Let's go to Billridge. Modify. Now I am going to place down another grammar school. You might say, well, why the heck are you placing more grammar schools? you got plenty of those. Yeah... But I would like to get, at least get a couple more. Reason being, we still have a lot of unemployed poor. Let's at least start moving them up into the working class. Alright, and we're also going to focus on getting our high schools, getting some more vocational schools. Let's try to get more class mobility and see how well that works out for us. Our money has been doing relatively well, and a big part of that is because our industry is still cranking out tons of products. We have really efficient industry. Um, but Smithton... I don't know. They really need some middle class people. If we can just get more middle class, our industry will become so outrageously profitable. Just a little bit more. That's all I'm asking for. Just a little bit more. And we're going to make it happen, by God. All right, we have another grammar school. Let's do a quick check. All right, these areas are all covered. Again, don't forget, just because an area is covered by a school, that may impact their personal growth. But keep in mind, that will do nothing for your capacity. In fact, it's probably better to build several small... Uh, several smaller radius grammar schools because just because it has a larger radius does not mean its capacity goes up it's still 500 so even here in hackthorn which is only barely not covered i'm probably going to build another grammar school right over here because let's increase our capacity by god we need it i'm not worried about the personal growth forget the personal growth that's pointless who cares but we need more capacity for students that's what we're looking for plastics we can support plastic research or we can subside subside yeah sorry subside plastic industry 
Uh, this one, I think, helps us develop plastics a lot faster. This one, I think, makes the plastic industry more efficient. So let's go ahead and do that. Sales demand for the plastic industry goes down by 10%. Oh, we should also go to the trade deals here. And we should talk about uh, getting some more stuff. Do we care about university? Do we care about the ports? The tower? I still kind of like the idea of going for Sydney and trying to improve our port. Let's do that one. We're going to sign this as our twin city. Quality of services. Improve the quality of all companies by two, which is something we so desperately need. This might go a long way. There's St. Petersburg, by the way. By the way, <laughs> I don't know if I wasn't really planning on going into this, but while I'm playing here. Um, so last video, I got quite a few criticisms um, from, from saying something pretty stupid about the Soviet Union and whether or not it existed in 1937 and stuff like that. And I'll, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm right there with you guys. When I was listening to myself after I finished editing the video on Thursday night and uploaded it for Friday morning, uh, I, I watched through it and I heard that and I'm like, oh crap, I, I did I really say that? Oh, that's not going to go over well. Maybe no one will notice. No, it's the internet, of course they're going to notice. Uh, that was that was stupid. Obviously, I know that the Soviet Union existed before 1937. In fact, after the Rus Ru Russian Revolution in 1917, it was founded in 1922. All right, that is actually one of those really bizarre cases where my brain was turning against me, and I could just explain that a little bit. Hey, I'm gonna get rid of these workshops, by the way. I don't care about the unemployment in these areas, and um, I want to save the money, so we're just gonna go ahead and rid of them. But yeah, let's play some more schools real quick while I talk. So. <laughs> Um, I've got a weird thing in my brain, and maybe some of you guys can relate to me a little bit on this. Um, have you ever had a moment where you're trying to say something to someone, and you, you cross words? Like, you, 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 you're, you know you can go in two different directions with your sentence, but you, you cross the words you were trying to say? You ever done that? Because I have. Uh, for example, instead of saying, yes, that sounds good... You also could be saying, well, yes, that sounds fine. And instead you say, yes, that sounds food, right? Have you ever had that happen? I mean, I, I know. I, I, maybe I'm just, maybe it's just me. I don't, I don't think so. But that's kind of a situation that happens there. I have this weird thing in my brain. And I, I've never had a psychologist or a, a neurologist look into it. But the best way I can describe it is I feel like I have two separate streams of consciousness inside of my brain that usually run parallel to each other, but sometimes go in different directions. And when they do, that can cause me to kind of have a conflict and kind of mess my brain up. Uh, very much like that, but usually with bigger things. So in the case of the Soviet Union thing, I was actually about to make a joke of the non-existent Soviet Union trying to make a joke that we can't have a trade deal with St. Petersburg because apparently that's just, it's not unlocked as if it doesn't exist. I know it's gated behind a technology, but that was a joke I was about to go into. And then I started thinking on the separate track of my brain, wait a minute, in 1937, when did they start working on their space program? I know we think of it from the Cold War period, but was, when did they actually start working on it? Was it, was it pre-World War II or was it all after? And I couldn't remember. So I'm thinking that on one hand, but I had just said non-existent, and then I started saying, wait, did they exist? Well, maybe they did. I can't remember. You know, and what I really wanted to say was, did they start working on the space program by 1937? Well, maybe they did. I couldn't remember. That's basically where it was going, and it, it's still my fault. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> it's just one of those situations where my brain just completely tripped upon myself. Like, it's going faster than I was able to think. It's so annoying when that happens, and it's embarrassing, and it's like, oh, God, I just said something stupid, didn't I? But I didn't want to take a lot of time to correct it. Because in those kind of moments, you're like, well, cut your losses and run. <laughs> There's no fixing this. Run, run, just go. Right? Ugh. Embarrassing. Very embarrassing. But what can you do, right? What can you do at this point? Let's go here and let's place down another high school. We'll place it somewhere over here. Confirm, confirm. Done. Just getting these schools laid out. We're going to try to get some more class mobility. See how well it works for us. Do we want to go to the edicts and see if there's anything new we want to pass? Yeah, sorry for going on a long talk about that. Maybe I shouldn't be so sensitive to people criticizing me on that kind of stuff. It just, I hate feeling stupid, you know? I, I obviously know that the Soviet Union existed before World War II, before, you know, the 1930s. I know that. I was just a stupid little brain thing that kind of screwed me over. We're going to support psychiatrists because this improves the uh, me medical industry substantially. And that could actually be a pretty profitable industry for us. I've actually found... On many occasions, um, the further you go into the game, some of your old industry, like forestry, for example, which you would not think of as being very profitable in the 1950s now, 
um, will stick around because you made them so profitable, but honestly, they ought to die and make room for, let's say, car manufacturers. There's been a lot of people who suggest one of the things you could do is actually uh, demolish old types of, like alcohol industry, for example. Demolish this and try to make room for more modern industry like medical technology, like plastics and so on, in order to help have a more modern, uh, high quality industry in your city. And also produce better goods for your commercial services. I have no idea if that exactly will work the way that people hope it will, but that's what the theory has been on Reddit, in the Steam forums, and stuff like that, so... I don't know, could be worth a shot someday. Is it something I care about right now? Probably not, but... It's a thing. Let's go to the Progress Cloud. What do we want to work on now? I think we were talking about going to pop music, so I can start working down toward the sexual revolution, which will be worth a ton of social life. The Sexual Orientation Act. It is no longer recognized as a disease. Support. Um, pop music will give us something to kind of reduce graffiti which they call blot, I guess, anti-blot campaign. Uh, banning obscene music, youths on radio will be good for the young people, city-sponsored music festivals to give temporary boosts, happiness boosts for all young adults, and the arcade. Mayor elections coming in soon. Who are we gonna run against? Got no freaking clue. Still making a ton of money though, we're up to 131 million failures in the bank. Let's keep modifying the districts. And now that we have two high schools and three vocational schools, do I feel the need to add in any more, or are we good with where we are for now? I feel pretty good with the schools that we have, at least for the time being. We could place more, though. Alright, so the sales demand for, I think this is like medical technology and like health services or something like that, goes down by 25%. So, health just became a very, very lucrative business here in Swarelia. So, now let's try to modify districts some more. Uh, what do we want to add? One thing I did forget, in Ulrington, this is where the only districts that we never did add up to this electric grid. So let's go ahead and do that now. Add in the electric streetlights and add in some waste bins. Confirm, confirm, propose, done. Thank you. And then I'm going to show you guys that uh, unless something's changed here, I don't think we can close down gas infrastructure. I would love to, don't get me wrong. Closing down gas infrastructure would save me a few hundred thousand thalers per month. However, it's surprisingly difficult to encourage the council to vote on it. No class war. You were asked to give a speech at the first graduation ceremony of a recently established school. Alongside the usual good wishes and encouragement, there is a chance to inspire the population on a grander scale. Do you? Do I what? Class war is over. Happiness is life's ultimate goal. Change the world to be what you want it to be. Class war is over. Personal growth goes up from all high schools. The young can be whatever they want to be. Which is a message I've never really believed, but... The young can be whatever they work to be, but not just because they want it. We are not entitled to anything, in my opinion. But anyways, who? we are still having a lot of trouble with residential stuff, and honestly, I really wish the RCI did a better job of communicating to you what you actually need. It's just never enough. It just barely tells you a thing. The economy's looking good. A tax cut for middle-class workers. Uh, I'm going to oppose it. Not because I don't necessarily agree, but because I do not want the Social Democrats getting any more power in the vote. I much prefer the Pacifist Party, which is probably the most friendly to me, uh, stays in control. Let's go to the Edicts. Let's take a look here. So, ban lobotomy. Oh, I was talking about uh, close down gas infrastructure. Look at this. It is considered to be a very liberal right policy here. And not a single party is in that. If I propose it right now, they will never say yes. I don't know why. At this point, if we look at the infrastructure, every single district is now hooked up to the electric grid. We have no need for the gas. And yet, and yet, it doesn't matter. We're not allowed to close it down, by God. We still like having our gas lamps. They're a novelty. Something stupid like that, I don't know. Either way, it's very frustrating. I wish we could close it down. It really would be worth a ton of money to me. But oh well. So, how are we doing as far as our traffic? Pretty good, honestly. Not enough of a problem that I think I need to even deal with it at all. I think we can leave it as is. Uh, the last thing that we... Whoops, wrong one. The last thing that we just researched was plastics, which has the Exhibition Center. There is now a new institution that we ought to place. Exhibition Center. Let's go ahead and place it, let's say, right up... Can I place it here? No. Let's just say right here. 
Exhibition Center improves social life and education to all residents. Personal growth, social life, and fun. Anything with Wheel of Life improvements is good for us right now, especially when it comes to social life. Nightclubs? Yeah, women can absolutely go to nightclubs if they want to. The fun of the entire city goes up for a little while. Or at least a district. I don't really pay attention to which one, but... Yeah. How are we looking as far as... Yeah, here are some more of these low-quality companies here. It is interesting to me that um, uh, commercial buildings do not show you what they employ, or who they employ. Like, why not? I want to know. I want to know who you're... I want to know who you're employing here. Oh, wait, there it is. Yeah, two working class people. A working class, poor. This one doesn't show you. Yeah. It just seems like wherever we have quality issues, it just means that we don't have enough middle class or elites. Pacifist Party wins the elections again. New institution, Exhibition Center. <sighs> Let's get this up. Come on. Come on. Modify taxes. Oh, okay. So we are going to reduce the tax on the middle class. All right. In theory, that means we will get more middle class people, at least a little bit easier than we had before. The important thing is not to reduce taxes on the working class. Right now, they're kind of the bulk of my taxes. Voting on a new mayor. I don't know who this guy is, but I love his hat. I think he might... Is this a Von Filtzen? I cannot recall. He's definitely more on the conservative side. If we look at the mayor thing... The uh, Christian Democratic Party is the one that dislikes me the most. And then you have the moderates who are right conservative as well. The centrals are right in the center. But anything on the left and anything liberal tends to like me. So he's definitely up here. He might be a Von Filtzen. I cannot rightly recall. We have some goodwill for the central party. Let's go ahead and offer to buy them a beer. Let's go to the moderate party next. Uh, the city really needs this. Moves us a bit. I'm not going to make the uh, the Christian Democrats like me. That's just not that's just not going to happen. And the Social Democrats and the Pacifist Party are already in the approved tab. I think they're once they're in the approved tab. I think they try to swing other parties. So we're going to be fine. I'm almost positive we're going to win this election, but we'll pay attention to it. Make sure it's not an issue. Pop music is done. Good. Youth are happier. Arcades are unlocked. Now we work toward that sexual revolution, which. Uh, Basically, it comes down to contraception. As soon as we developed cheaper, more accessible forms of contraception, it changed everything. Pop music. Click. There is nothing new in the fact that grown-ups see the youth as degenerate, but this time the youth have gone too far. They are listening to an immoral cacophony they call music, that you can never compete with the quality of more classical music. The lyrics are filled with satanic whisperings and lewdness. What do you think should be done about it? Embrace the change, I think. We're not going to ban obscene music. I'm not going to protect the children, we're just going to embrace it. As a result, personal growth and fun goes up, but security for the elderly goes down. Replenish the Earth. The Christian Democratic Party has proposed a ban to all methods of contraception, because the Bible says, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the Earth. We're going to oppose this one, because I don't want to reduce fun across the board. It does give us more population, but we're having a lot of trouble with housing right now anyway. So we're going to oppose it. Almost everyone does anyway. Honestly, the Christian Democratic Party just has no friends right now, seriously. They, they can get nothing done. Every party will go against them across the board. But anyways, you who, I think I'm gonna have to end this video here because now we're going on half an hour. I'm sorry for spending the first 10 minutes just talking about mechanics and stuff and then just kind of going on my own personal rant, but the point is, a lot of stuff's been going on here lately. I've learned a lot, and I think it's worth sharing because by God, this game can get confusing at times. And for those of you who want to follow along and try it yourselves, you need to be aware that one of the great flaws of the game is that it's not communicating crucial mechanics and information to you. And you need to find ways around it. So I'm trying to make the game better as a whole. That's the way that I see it. And I'm trying to help this community around. And also, sometimes it's just entertaining to hear me go on a rant about how stupid the game can be. I don't know. Maybe you'll like that. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed. If so, then be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I, as always, will see you guys next time.